Hello, my name is Brendan Walker, and I'm a student athlete here at the University of Oklahoma, and I want to talk to you today about youth tackle football. And the best way uh, to start this off is to share my experience with football. And uh, I was born into a football family. Uh, for the first seven years of my life, my dad played professional football, and so I was fully immersed in that whole lifestyle. And probably from the time I started playing the game of football at the age of four, uh, I can say that I fell in love with it. And fast forward 16 years later, uh, I'm now a Division One football player, and I couldn't be more thankful. Um, and the memories and the lessons I've learned are something that I'll forever cherish. And um, But one of the biggest concerns surrounding football that uh, a lot of people share, even myself, uh, surrounds brain concussions and head trauma. Uh, this is something serious. This is something um, really scary, especially with my experience with them. Um, I had two really severe concussions back in high school, and I had one mild one in college. And they're very scary when you take into consideration uh, Junior Seau. Uh, he was a, a former football player who developed CTE after years of playing football and ultimately ended up killing himself um, just because he couldn't handle uh, the pain that was associated with CTE. And uh, that's a sad reality. Um, but on the flip side, um, uh, there is way more awareness surrounding uh, head trauma and research of CTE. Like 20 years ago, this CTE and anything like that wasn't really much of a thing. Uh, but now, uh, due to people like Ben Omalu, which is a, an American pathologist, uh, he examined uh, deceased football players, and he began to see trends in his examinations uh, where these individuals were showing uh, brain deformalities, and which is what we now know as CTE. And with that began uh, research of head trauma and concussions and how that affects us. Um, so if someone were to ask me if I would let my child play football 20 years ago, my answer would be no, it's just way too dangerous. And I understand as a parent, you have an obligation to keep your kid as safe as possible and to keep them out of harm's way. And some parents feel that if they were to let their child play you tackle football, it'd be letting them, or it'd be uh, putting their child in harm's way deliberately. And uh, I just think that uh, in the world today, and like anything in the world, there's always room for growth and evolution. And I think that's something that football is really undergoing. Uh, it's been a 20-year process, and uh, it kind of starts off with the helmets. Uh, the Journal of Neurosurgery conducted a study where they tested the effectiveness of helmets from different eras of football. So the beginning was the leather era. Um, then there was about the mid early mid-2000s, and what we use now. And of course, um, unsurprisingly, the helmets that we use now are a lot safer than anything that's ever used. And uh, they used a linear acceleration test, which is a very accurate um, representation of what it's like to get a concussion um, outside of just falling down and hitting your head. Um, and uh, the analysis uh, demonstrated that the modern helmets that we use now are significantly superior to anything used before in all the given scenarios that they, they put the test or they gave each helmet. And uh, I think that's important to understand um, is that there's evolution. If there's been evolution in the 20 years of uh, concussion research, there's just imagine the, the room for growth for years and on, years on. And, uh, and it's also uh, good to note companies like the Virginia, Virginia Tech Helmet Company, uh, they have built their entire company around helmet safety and equipment safety. And uh, they test and grade helmets and pieces of equipment on things like head impact, uh, linear and angular acceleration, and even uh, high impact head trauma in youth sports. Um, the way they do this is that they developed a star system. Uh, and the star system is a series of tests that they use to grade their helmets to test the effectiveness, safeness, and they grade them from one to five stars, five stars of course being the best. Um, and another great thing about the Virginia Tech Helmet Rating Company is that they have many publications in the realm of research uh, in order to make helmets safer and the game of football safer. Uh, some of their publications include brain injury prediction, uh, uh, past, present, and future head of injury research, and bio or biomechanical risk estimates for mild traumatic brain injury. Um, you know, general education about football and head trauma has made the game of football a lot safer. Uh, first, we have come a long way when it comes to research and knowledge about the anatomy and physiology of head trauma. Uh, just like any sport, anyone can fall down and hit their head, but also, I would also venture to say that most of the concussions that uh, players endure 
are uh, <clears throat> while playing football uh, with improper technique in regards to tackling. And that's kind of goes to my next point. It's just uh, that the fundamentals and there's a change going on within the game. Uh, you know, the reality is, is that sports, there's going to be injuries in whatever you, you do. And that's just sports. And that's an innate risk that you have to, to outweigh. Uh, but like famous uh, f- football coach Vince Lombardi said, uh, he took nothing for granted. He began a tradition of starting from scratch, assuming that the players were blank slates who carried over no knowledge from the year before. And when you take in consideration you tackle football and the role it plays, uh, this is, you tackle football, uh, the kids going into it are blank slates. They are, um, this is where they will learn the most. You know, fortunately, I was blessed to have great coaches who taught me great technique. And unfortunately, there's some kids who don't have the same opportunity that I had. Um, so it's great when you have uh, federations or places or companies like the National Federation of State High School Associates uh, that have teamed up with the CDC to ensure that uh, coaches are capable of coaching football. And they offer classes ta- talking about how to evaluate concussions and head trauma and also the game of football and proper tackling. And uh, this is something that uh, we need. And also the NFSH, the NFHS states, you know, this course highlights the impact of uh, sports-related concussions in athletes, teaches how to recognize a suspected concussion and provides protocols to manage and suspend a concussion with steps to help players return. And when you have companies like the Virginia Tech Company or the National Federation of State High School Associates and they're putting ways to ensure that coaches are teaching solid technique, when these kids are being coached by competent coaches, you know, they have a strong foundation. So when they get to earlier and are, when they get to later uh, parts of their career, you know, they're a lot safer because they're playing with better technique. Um, and my last point is that, you know, football gets a really bad rap for being extremely dangerous. And I think it's important to realize that all sports are probably innate dangerous and it's just a part of the game. And it's just something that uh, we just have to accept and you know, in the, John Hopkins did a study where they said about 30 million children uh, and teens participate in some type of organized sports. Uh, and with that number, there's probably close to 4 million uh, injuries a year. And this is also another study done by the National Safety Council uh, back in 2017, where they tested athletes from the ages 15 to 24. And they, uh, you know, football wasn't even, it didn't have the most amount of injuries, it was basketball. Uh, and the most shocking was that uh, football uh, didn't even have the highest concussion sport. There was actually the highest rate of concussions were hockey, snowboarding, and water tubing, uh, surprisingly. Um, and in another study uh, done, uh, football doesn't even account for the highest total of concussions. Uh, sports like gymnastics and soccer have higher rates of injuries uh, in those regards, uh, which is also a crazy statistic, especially when you realize that like football gets a really bad rap for being so dangerous. Um, but you know, I'm really passionate about this because I just want every kid to have the same opportunity I had uh, that was granted to me through football. Um, it may not have to be college football, but the many lessons I learned, like perseverance and hard work and teamwork, uh, those are things that I take in and, and I, I apply to my life daily. Um, and it's something that I don't know if I really would have learned, especially in that magnitude, if it wasn't for football. Um, so I don't believe that the game of football deserves the hate it receives. And, I believe the game is evolving and that children should be able to play you tackle football because the game is going to become safer. And um, that's it. Thank you.